In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We will glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In whom is our salvation, our life, and resurrection. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God, of our salvation that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests, the elders and scribes, and the whole council held a consultation and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And they all condemned him and said, He deserves to die. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. God did not spare his own son, for us all. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by your, your holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the, the world. world. Jesus went out bearing his cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Although he was a son, he learned obedience when he suffered. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose beloved Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption, give us courage to take up our cross and follow him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality of God, with God to be grasped, to be a thing to be grasped, that emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Let us pray. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, God holy, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. To what can I liken you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What likeness can I use to comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For vast is the sea of your ruin. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. A sword will pierce your own soul also. And fill your heart with bitter pain. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed will, that in the passion of your Son, a sword of grief should pierce the soul of the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, mercifully grant that your church, having shared with her in his passion, may be made worthy to share in the joys of his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy immortal, immortal one, have, have mercy upon, upon us. The fifth station, the cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be served, but to serve, bless all who, following in his steps, give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy. For the love of him who laid down his life for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The sixth station, a woman wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because because by by your your holy cross, cross, you you have have redeemed redeemed the world. We have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of men. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we are healed. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. You have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. But as for me, I'm a worm and no man. I am loved and despised by the people. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
In your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of the people, and among them were women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Those who sowed with tears We'll reap with with songs songs of of joy. joy. Let us pray. Teach your church, O Lord, to mourn the sins of which it is guilty, and to repent and forsake them, that by your pardoning grace the results of our iniquities may not be visited upon our children and our children's children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
the ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. He has besieged me and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in the ashes. Remember, O Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before his shears is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Let us pray. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, mighty holy holy and mortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mingled with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. They gave me gall to eat. And, and when, when I was, I was thirsty, thirsty, they, they gave, gave me vinegar, vinegar to, to drink. drink. Let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time confident of the glory which shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him. And with him they crucified two criminals, one on the right, the other on the left, and Jesus between them. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, he was numbered with the transgressors. They pierced my hands and my feet. They are in gloat over me. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. Amen.
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because Because by by your your holy holy cross, cross, you you have have redeemed redeemed the world. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, He said, it is finished. And then crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. Christ for us became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy Holy and and mighty, mighty, holy holy and mortal mortal one, have mercy mercy upon us. us. The thirteenth station, the body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. All you who pass by, Behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping. My soul is in tumult. My heart is poured out in grief because of the downfall of my people. Do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. 
for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Her tears run down her cheeks. And she has Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy and mortal one, have, have mercy upon us. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by, by your, your holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. You will not abandon me to the grave. Nor let your Holy One see corruption. Let us pray. O oh God, your blessed Son was laid in a tomb in a garden and rested on the Sabbath day. Grant that we who have been buried with him in the waters of baptism may find our perfect rest in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have, have mercy upon us. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save, Save us, us and, and help us we as humbly we humbly beseech, beseech you, O Lord. Lord. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the dominion of sin and death and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. And we pray that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his love may he raise us to eternal joys, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To Christ our Lord who loves us and washed us in his own blood and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be our God, forever 
and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. servant shall prosper, he shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no former majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Be Our psalm today is Psalm 22, verses 1 to 21, found in your bulletin insert. Let's read it responsively. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. Yet you are the Holy One. Our forefathers put their trust in you. 
They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They their lips and their heads, he trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb. And kept me safe on my breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. Many young bulls encircle me. They open wide their jaws at me. I am poured out like water. All of my bones are out of joint. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. Packs of dogs close, it, close me in, and gangs of evildoers is circle around me. They stare and gloat over me. Be not far away, O Lord. Save me from the sword. Save me from the lion's mouth. I will declare your name to my brethren. In this reading, we hear that God has established the promised new covenant through which our sins are forgiven and God's laws are written on our hearts. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts and I'll write them on their minds, he also added. I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from all evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. You may remain seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, beginning with chapter 19, verse 1. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! 
crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I'm the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken 
and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows what he says is the truth. These things occurred so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. Father, give us eyes to see. Father, give us ears to hear. Father, give us teachable hearts that we may recognize you as Lord and turn and in our turning be healed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This Holy Week I've been talking about giving our lives away the way that Jesus gave his life away. Last night I talked about the power of the hand in giving our lives away. Today I want to talk about the power of the eye in giving our lives away. Think about of all the I phrases and statements and proverbs in our culture. Got my eye on you. I got my eye on you. You caught my eye. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The future is in the eyes. Beware the haughty and envious eye. The eyes are the windows of the soul and many more. Thinking about the power of the eyes, what have your eyes seen? What images have your eyes caught and burned into your mind and soul? Loving and lovely images, painful and tragic images, The images of Holy Week are a powerful blend of the joyous and loving and the traumatic and horrific. Think about what Jesus saw and who saw Jesus during Holy Week. This is about human beings. This is about everyday people going about their lives in their normal surroundings, in their home, in their town, at their work, in their families. Those people doing those things experienced what we now call Holy Week. When Jesus rode in triumphant, There were people who were not just laying palms in his path and their coats in their path, but there were people who were going, what the heck is this? I've been pondering on what it was like to not only be putting down palm branches and your coats and looking at Jesus, to look in Jesus' eyes. How many people went up and touched Jesus? How many people who are wondering, what the heck is this, saw something extraordinary? 
and those eyes. Last night I said that the hands can communicate. If the hands can communicate, how much more can eyes speak? Can eyes call? Can eyes proclaim? Can eyes bless? Can eyes forgive? Monday, Thursday, during the day, getting ready for the Passover meal. The eyes of the apostles, disciples, looking at each other, scurrying around, getting things ready. We only hear about the men in the scripture, go get the room ready, go get the, you know. But I'm telling you, there were women doing it. And the simple, the simple coordination and actions. This is, Passover is, what we call Monday, Thursday. What we call the Last Supper is the highest, most holy meal in the Jewish faith. If we think Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas Day dinner is something, Passover is even more. There's even a special phrase. Why is this night not like any other? In time together at the Last Supper in paintings and art for hundreds of years depicted. Looking across the Passover meal at each other in the paintings, it's just Jesus and the apostles. I expect there were a whole lot more people involved than that. And what was in Jesus' eyes when he said to Judas, go do what you got to do? What were in Judas' eyes, looking into those eyes, directing him to go begin to end his life. What was Jesus, what were in his eyes? What was in his eyes after Judas left? What did it communicate to the other apostles that they were just missing? What was in Jesus' eyes when he said, Oh, come on, we're going to go over to the garden. And when he looked at them and he says, I'm going to be right over there. I need your prayer cover. And looked at them. And said, watch with me, all right. And what was Jesus' eyes when he came back and looked at them and they're asleep? And what was in Jesus' eyes when Jesus sees Judas come walking through the garden in front of a mob? And what was in Judas' eyes when he walked up and called him rabbi and kissed him? And what was in the guard's eyes, tradition says his name was Malthus, when Peter whacked off his ear and Jesus put it back. And what was in the apostles' eyes when they looked at the situation and looked at each other and took off running? And what was in Jesus' eyes as he watched them abandon him? And I don't think there's an artist ever or will be ever 
who could depict the look in Peter's face Especially his eyes when the cock crowed and he looked at Jesus and Jesus looked back at him. And I suspect there was a great deal of malevolence in the eyes of the men that whipped Jesus and beat him to a pulp. Maybe some of them are just bored. That's just work. What's, what's duty tonight? Oh, I don't know. We got some joker. The Jews are upset with him, and Pilate doesn't want to touch him with a pole, but he says we've got to be on duty tonight, so we've got to be on duty tonight. What was in the eyes of the crowd... When Jesus is carrying the cross, done what we call now the Via Della Rosa, and people are just trying to do their business and go to work and take care of their kids, and oh man, there's a detour because the Romans are taking somebody to be crucified. Why today? Why right now? What an inconvenience. And Veronica is the name given to the woman that wiped Jesus' face. Precious women, what would have been, huh? What would have been like to take off your veil and wipe that poor man's face and look into those eyes? And the Romans doing the crucifixion, it was crucifixion duty. It wasn't like, oh, no, we've got to do a crucifixion. Oh, no. Pilate was famous for crucifixions. Josephus said that after some revolution or something, Pilate crucified somebody every hundred meters or so on both sides of the road from Jerusalem to the Mediterranean Sea to Tyre. You know, that's like from Orlando to Daytona on I-4, every hundred meters or so, somebody is crucified. That's not called terror. That's called skilled training to crucify that many people. They knew what they were doing. What's your duty today? Oh, man, I got crucifixion duty again. I hate it. What a mess and what a pain. We have to stay there till they die. Oh, man. You want to take crucifixion duty for me? How much will you pay me? Now, I expect that the crucifiers didn't care what was in his eyes. They just got to get him attached to the cross, get the cross set. I hate this duty. John was the only one. John was the only one of the apostles and disciples there according to Scripture. And John takes the liberty to say, I'm the one that Jesus really loved. What was in his eyes looking at that? And we just sang Sabat Mater. What was in Mary's eyes? Your moms, what would be in your eyes? Your dads, what would be in your eyes? If that was your boy. Beat to a pulp and then nailed to a cross. And you know where there's a crowd, there's going to be vendors, okay? People trying to make a buck, just trying to make a living, going to be a, supposed to be a big crucifixion today. Well, let's get things ready and get a good spot. 
because this wasn't a holy Christian day. This was another day in Jerusalem with huge crowds because of the Passover. If Jerusalem was 10,000 during the year, it was 100,000 over Passover, money to be made, get there, get a good spot. Going to be a good business day. You understand this was not the holiest moment in the world for most people. What was Jesus' eyes? What did they say to the man when he said, Today, you'll be with me in paradise? What was in Jesus' eyes when he said that? What was in the man's eyes when he received that blessing? John, that's your mama. Mama, that's your son. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Think about what Jesus' eyes saw from the cross. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. That's what Jesus saw. When Jesus saw his mother, can you imagine that? I'm being crucified, and my mom has to watch this. And the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Those of y'all that have seen or seen this series chosen. There's a wonderful piece where, and I think it's John, it might be, yeah, I think it's John, where he's sitting and he's quizzing Mary on Jesus this and Jesus that. So real, so human, so poignant. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he cried, I'm thirsty. Sour wine, sponge, receive the wine. I said, It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus died. And our place for our sins. Jesus died in our place for our active rebellion, for our passive indifference to God. And that is why St. Paul can say to us across two millennia of Christian experience, therefore, my friends, we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is his flesh, 
And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and in assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water It is because of the cross of Jesus Christ that with clear and steady eyes we can see through God's word. We can look into heaven and we can look at our lives with courage and with confidence and with hope. On this Good Friday, we are reminded that we are able now We, we are now able to look into the eyes of Jesus. That's what two thousand years of Christian experience tell us on this day. Don't miss the opportunity to look into the eyes of Jesus. because I want to help you all remember this. Would you be so kind as to stand? The power of the eyes of Jesus is the power to communicate the love and mercy and care and forgiveness and hope of God. I want to give you all the opportunity to use the power of your eyes. And what I want you to do is look around and look into each other's eyes, look into your neighbor's eyes and say, now I have hope. Can you do that? Look around, look in your neighbor's eyes, look them in the eye. And say, now I have hope. 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 
Now I have hope. Our service continues. Please remain standing with the solemn colleagues. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, that all who believe in him may be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. And you may kneel or sit. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ through the world, throughout the world, for its unity and witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Justin, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community and any about to be baptized that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth, for those in authority among them, for Joe, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide us with your wisdom that those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in mind or body, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them 
for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, their faith. For those who are hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray that they may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up and things which have grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your, by your holy, holy cross, Spirit, you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the, the world. world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We, we adore, adore you, O Christ, Christ and, and we bless you. you. Because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the, the world. world. Dr. Powell, will you please bring the cross down, sir? This might be new to some of you. It's a very old tradition. It's called the veneration of the cross. Uh, we'll set the pal in place. We'll set the cross in place. And you, turn by turn, may come and stand and kneel before it.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. undone. We, we have, have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not, not loved, loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we, we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that, that we, we may delight in your will and, and walk in your ways to, to the, the glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Together, the Lord's Prayer, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Give us a moment, please, and then we'll have communion from the reserve sacrament.
the concluding prayer together, please. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead. To your holy church, give peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.